Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a post-apocalyptic horror film called 28 Days Later. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a group of radical animal rights activists storming into a laboratory. The lab has held different species of chimpanzees in captivity for medical research. The radical activists proceed to free the animals, but a lab staffer warns the group against it, alleging that the animals are infected with the highly infectious rage virus. However, the animal rights activists do not heed his advice and start releasing the chimps. Lo and behold, as soon as the chimps are released, they violently start attacking everyone in the lab, infecting them in the process. The lab staffer tries killing the infected, but it's too late and he easily gets overpowered. The infection spreads rapidly through the activists and turns them into uncontrollable monsters in a matter of 20 seconds. The movie then fast forwards to 28 days in the future. A man named Jim wakes up in a hospital bed. As he gets up from his bed and looks around, he realizes that the hospital is deserted and trashed. All phone lines are dead. He grabs a beverage and heads out, only to realize that the entire city of London is deserted and seems like it underwent some sort of catastrophe, much like the hospital. He wanders through the city, hoping to find other people. He comes across a church where a large group of people have gathered. He calls out for them, only to get chased by people who seem to have turned into raging monsters. They follow Jim into the streets until he runs into two survivors, Selena and Mark. The duo throw DIY petrol bombs at the raging monsters, setting them on fire. They then finish the monsters off by using explosives and lead Jim into their hideout, a shop in the London Underground. It is revealed that Jim is a bicycle courier who met with an accident and went into a coma. While he was in a coma, the rage virus uncontrollably spread throughout the country, turning people into violent monsters and resulting in a societal collapse. There's no radio, electricity, TV, government, army or police, and all that's left for consumption is candies and canned soft drinks. Selena speculates that the catastrophe has gone global. The revelation alarms Jim, and he insists on finding his parents. Selena and Mark try to advise him against it, but eventually relent and accompany him to his parents' home the next morning. Much like the entire city, Jim's home seems haunted. He finds his parents' dead bodies in their room. They seem to have committed suicide together and have left a final note for him. Jim breaks into tears after reading the note. For safety reasons, the trio decide to spend the night in Jim's home and sleep in the same room. The thought of his parents doesn't let Jim sleep. As Selena and Mark peacefully sleep, Jim looks at his mother's handwriting and old home videos. Suddenly, two monsters break into his home from the window and attack him like raging maniacs. Selena and Mark quickly wake up and come to Jim's rescue, and the monsters are quickly neutralized. Jim survives without injury, but Mark is bleeding from the fight. Fearing a possible infection, Selena quickly knocks Mark down and hacks him to death with a machete as Jim watches in horror. Selena decides to immediately leave for the store, fearing more possible attacks. Jim is shaken by Mark's murder, but Selena explains to him that the virus spreads through contaminated blood, overtaking the victims in a matter of seconds and turning them into raging violent monsters. She believes that just being alive is enough and the end justifies the means. She warns him that if he ever gets infected, she would kill him in a heartbeat. As they head to the store, they notice Christmas lights blinking in an apartment window in a high-rise building in an otherwise dark and desolate city. They get hopeful of finding other survivors and go to investigate. They take the stairs to the apartment, but halfway through their journey, Jim suffers from fatigue and extreme headache, possibly due to hunger. She proceeds to pass him painkillers and a drink, but suddenly they hear sounds of infected people climbing the stairs. Panicking, the duo run upstairs and run into a man in police riot gear. The man directs the pair to his apartment while he blocks the infected. The infected try to get past him, but the man manages to neutralize them. The man then welcomes the two to their apartment and introduces himself as Frank. He lives with his teenage daughter, Hannah. He offers them some wine and turns off the battery-run Christmas lights. Selena and Jim spend the night at Frank's flat and privately discuss whether they should stay with them. Jim believes that they are good people, but Selena thinks that they will slow them down and she would leave them behind in a heartbeat. Selena's kind of a dick about this heartbeat thing. 
She warns Jim that putting others above one's survival is a guaranteed way of getting killed. The next morning, Frank and Jim check the water they have left. The situation isn't looking good, as it has not rained in days, and Frank believes they won't be able to survive for long, holed up in the apartment. He then shows Jim and Selena a recording of a radio broadcast transmitted by soldiers. The soldiers, stationed near Manchester, claim to have found the answer to the infection and are calling survivors to come find them. Frank suggests they head to Manchester. Selena initially hesitates, but eventually agrees. The group then heads out in Frank's car. During their journey, they come across a tunnel. Jim is skeptical of passing through a dark tunnel, but Frank and Selena veto him and head into the tunnel. The tunnel is blocked by a pile of car debris and Frank drives over it, resulting in a flat tire. Jim's worst fear comes true, and the group hears a bunch of infected people running towards them. Frank and the others team up and frantically change the tire, just managing to escape in time. After traveling some distance, they stop to stock up on food and other essential supplies. They also fill up a large jerry can with fuel for their long journey. The group spends the night in a pastoral field and have dinner together. After spending time with Frank and his daughter, Selena's opinion about life begins to change. She admits to Jim that just being alive isn't enough, and there is more to life. Afraid of being attacked, Jim and Hannah have a hard time falling asleep, while Selena easily dozes off. Jim wakes her and asks her to share her secret. Selena passes them pills that she takes to fall asleep. She reveals that she is a qualified chemist and the pills are safe. That's what they all say. Jim and Hannah take one each and fall asleep while Frank stays up to watch out for the infected monsters. The next morning, they continue their journey. After driving for hours, they reach a blockade. They also notice fires engulfing Manchester in the distance. To their dismay, they learn that the blockade is deserted. Selena suggests they should return home, but Frank isn't ready to give up. He looks around for soldiers but eventually loses hope. He starts getting agitated and screams at the others in frustration. A cawing crow feeding on an infected soldier's corpse adds to his frustration. Frank kicks on the tin wall and tries to ward off the bird, but a drop of contaminated blood lands in his eyes instead. Realizing that he has been infected, Frank tells his daughter to keep away from him, but Hannah only grows worried and walks towards him as the virus begins to take over Frank's body. Selena quickly stops Hannah while Frank is shot dead by soldiers hidden behind the blockade. It turns out the blockade wasn't deserted after all. The soldiers take the three survivors and their car to a fortified mansion. They are greeted by Mayor Henry West, who is commanding the soldiers. The trio take showers and change into clean clothes. Frank's death and its impact on Hannah affects Selena, who has grown close to both over the past few days. Jim comforts Selena, and they start developing romantic feelings for each other. Jim later talks to West about the answer to infection they were promised in the army broadcast. West assures him that it may not be what he had imagined, but they do have an answer. The mansion is surrounded by high perimeter walls, and the surrounding ground has been laced with tripwires and landmines. They use wood fire to get hot water and cook food. West is also counting on the infected people to starve to death. He even keeps an infected soldier named Mailer chained in the mansion in order to study the effects of the virus. Everyone then gathers for dinner. As people eat whatever the soldier cook has managed to put together, West has disagreements with his sergeant, Farrell, over post-infection life. After dinner, West takes Jim for a drink. West gives him a lecture about survival before revealing that he had promised to provide women to his soldiers. The soldiers aren't just waiting for the infected to die, they also plan to survive by forcing sexual servitude on the female survivors. Alarmed by the revelation, Jim attempts to flee with Selena and Hannah. Sergeant Farrell tries to help them, but unfortunately, the soldiers easily capture them and lock Farrell and Jim in a room. While imprisoned, Farrell speculates that the virus must not have spread beyond British borders. He points out that the virus takes over one's body so fast that it would be impossible for the infected to flee the island and spread the disease. The following day, two soldiers take Farrell and Jim into the woods to execute them. When one of the soldiers named Jones hesitates to shoot his sergeant, the other soldier shoots Farrell for him. This angers Jones and he fights with the other soldier while Jim runs off. He crosses over the wall and manages to get away. On the other side, he notices the contrails of a plane flying overhead and becomes hopeful. 
Meanwhile, Selina and Hannah are ordered by West to become presentable to serve the soldiers and are taken to a washroom. Selina convinces the soldiers to give her some time to prepare Hannah. Suddenly, the sirens start going off. West learns that Jim had managed to flee and heads out to hunt him with one of his soldiers. Jim ambushes the soldier near the blockade and kills him. He then steals his gun and runs back to the mansion. At the headquarters, Jim releases the infected soldier Mailer from captivity. Mailer attacks the soldiers and the two girls manage to flee, but Selina gets captured by another soldier. Mailer's bite creates another monster and they start attacking other soldiers. Jim also takes out a soldier and looks for the girls as West returns. Jim violently kills the soldier who has held Selina hostage as she watches in horror. Fearing that he might be infected, Selina grabs her machete and proceeds to strike him but can't bring herself to go through with it. Jim tells her that that was longer than a heartbeat. Selina drops the machete and the two passionately make out. Hannah finds them and the three then rush to Frank's car. However, West, who is waiting for them in the passenger seat, shoots Jim in the stomach. Angered, Hannah drives the car and delivers West to the infected soldier. Mailer drags West out and Hannah drives away with Selina and Jim. Selina and Hannah take Jim to a deserted hospital. Selina performs a life-saving operation on Jim and another 28 days pass. Jim regains consciousness in a remote cottage, recovered from his injuries. In another room, he finds Selina sewing together a large piece of cloth. Suddenly, Hannah comes barging in, yelling, it's coming. The three grab the fabric and rush outside in a hurry. It is revealed that it is a large cloth banner, reading the word hello. A jet flies by and notices the SOS signal as the trio look up, optimistically. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.